Hello, this is TJ Savarino. I'm a forestry and wildlife extension agent with Clemson Cooperative Extension. And I wanted to talk to you today a little uh, about my backyard here in Sardis, South Carolina, in the southern part of Florence County, and about some of the native plants that uh, we have in and around our yard, some of which we planted, some of which volunteered, some of which continue to pop up thanks to birds and other species that are spreading the seeds. All of these plants have some value to wildlife, and that's what I want to tell you about today. A blue jay just flew into the red mulberry tree that we planted in the backyard. I suspect that he, or, or she, as it may be, is feeding on some of the fruits. Uh, red mulberries are a fast-growing uh, native species that produce fruit early in the year. And when it does have fruit on it, you can be sure that it will attract a lot of birds until all the fruit is gone. One of the great plants that occur naturally in our landscape is the black cherry. And those fleshy fruits are irresistible to a lot of different birds. We've had a, a really good crop this year. The weather conditions must have been just perfect at the time of flowering and setting fruit. Last year, we hardly had any at all but the birds are going to be filling themselves with uh, their fruits this year. Black cherry has a very distinctive bark. It's gray and tight bark when it's young. And as it gets older, the bark gets kind of flaky, as you can see here. Another plant that volunteers very readily is the, the winged sumac that you see here. It produces clusters of hard red fruits later on in the, in the year. Uh, this plant, hasn't flowered yet, but those fruits are persistent once they set. They're a dry fruit, but still they're appealing to eastern bluebirds and a lot of other songbirds. And they stay on the plant a long time through the winter, so they're available at a time when not a lot of other sources of food are available. This is one of the brush piles that I've created on the edge of our yard. Um, brush piles are important for wildlife as a scape cover. Uh, for species like rabbits, small rodents, and sometimes songbirds. This one has got an eastern red cedar that you can see right here it's coming up. And um, a lot of these brush piles will be the places where you, you'll see some of these species that I'm talking about uh, get their start. And this is because birds like to use these areas for perches. And since birds like to eat fruits, of course, they have to deposit their waste somewhere. So they drop the seeds where they perch along with a nice little packet of fertilizer. And before long, you've got a, a start of some new plants, whether you intended to have them there or not. One of my favorite native plants and one that the birds love as well is pokeweed. It produces small white flowers followed by uh, green berries. And if you're familiar with pokeweed, you'll know that later on in the year, these green berries will turn into very shiny, deep purple berries that the birds will be flocking to. Uh, when that happens, I'll expect to be seeing mockingbirds, brown thrashers, eastern bluebirds, and cardinals uh, coming to this plant when the fruits ripen. And the thing is that not all the fruit always gets eaten, and the berries, after they dry later in the year, will continue to drop seeds on the ground which the morning doves and other birds will be picking up. As you can see, this pokeweed is growing at the base of a fence line in our yard, and that's because the birds like to sit on these fence lines. And pokeweed is one of those plants that will spread through the distribution of seeds by the birds. However, I, I like the plant. A lot of people will try to get rid of them, but I leave it where it grows. I like to see the foliage and the fruits. It's a very photogenic plant. And because the birds love it so much, I just tend to leave them where they pop up. There are probably a dozen or a dozen and a half species in this garden, uh, including some non-native things that have sprouted up. But right now, the showcase in this garden is Rudbeckia. Um, and the pollinators are flocking to it. It has a very showy flower. Very, It's a very pretty plant, also drought tolerant, and does very well in poor soils. But there are other things in this garden that will be blooming at different times throughout the year 
So that's important for pollinators, uh, that they have a source of nectar and pollen throughout the season. And here we have one of our woody native plants that we've got in our native garden. This is beautyberry, calicarpa. And uh, you can see that it's flowering right now. And later on in the year, year it will have these orals of fuchsia colored berries around the stem. A lot of people see these on the edges of woods and the fruits are also eaten by songbirds. This is a cluster of purple disc sunflowers. They haven't put up their flowering scape yet, but when they do later on, they will have small sunflower type flowers. And at that time, later in the year, the native pollinators will be swarming to them as well. And we shouldn't forget about our native grasses. This is little blue stem, one of several we planted in this garden. And it makes a great alternative to some of the non-native invasive species that have brought been brought in over the years for landscaping, such as Chinese silvergrass or miscanthus. So consider using native grasses when you can. They put down a very deep root system which makes them drought tolerant and they do very well. This plant is a chinkapin, a close relative of our American chestnut. It's in the same genus, Castania, and it also produces a fruit similar to a chestnut, except smaller, black, encased in a prickly burr that's almost impossible to get through until it uh, splits open. Once it opens, the, the wildlife really zone in on it. You can see some of the flowers on this chinkapin that have turned brown, and hopefully they've already been pollinated. Uh, some part of the top inflorescence is still white. Well, thank you for taking the time to take a little tour of our yard. I hope you found it informative and enjoyable. Um, and remember, if you've got any questions about landscaping for wildlife on your property, uh, you can always uh, give us a call at one of the extension offices. I'm in the Lee County office in Bishopville, and I'll be glad to talk with you anytime. Hope you have a great day.